Welcome back to Chemistry 1510 video notes. We're going to talk about Chapter 6, the standard enthalpies of formation. We have already talked about enthalpies. They are delta H's and they, when they are standard, they have that little circle superscript up here that we called a knot. Now, the thing that's going to change here is we also have this little subscripted F. That subscriptive F is the F for formation. This is the amount of heat absorbed or evolved, which means given off, when one mole of substance is formed from their elements and their natural states. So, in order for a thermochemical equation to be classified as a formation one, it has to follow these rules. So let's look at these rules through an example. Here's an example of a thermochemical equation of formation for silver bromide. Notice how the reactants are in their natural state. Silver is a solid in its natural state. Bromine is a diatomic liquid in its natural state. We're making one mole of product, right? So there's a little invisible one right there. Of course, it's a balanced chemical equation. We absolutely have our equations of state, our solid, liquid, gas, aqueous. And then off to the side, we have our delta H. So these five things have to be followed in order for us to have a heat of formation, especially the reactants being elements in their natural state and forming one mole of product. So let's write a thermochemical equation of formation for calcium carbonate. So first, let's think about what elements are in calcium carbonate. Obviously, there's calcium. So if you remember, carbonate is a polyatomic ion. Carbonate has a, a value of CO3 2 minus, and calcium is a 2 plus. So the formula for calcium carbonate is CaCO3. The problem is telling you that it's a solid. Because we are doing an equation of formation, we can only have one mole of product. The calcium carbonate is our product, and so I'm going to put a 1 out in front of here, not because I need to, but because it's a good reminder to make sure that I don't end up accidentally balancing our normal way later on. So now we have to have our elements be forming this calcium carbonate, and those elements have to be in their natural state. So this is where it's great to have a colored periodic table like the one um, that should be hanging in our classroom. So calcium is going to be a solid. Carbon is also a solid. Oxygen is a diatomic gas. Most of you would probably need to actually look those things up. You wouldn't be memorized, and that's perfectly fine. I don't expect you to memorize them. So now we need to balance our equation. Notice how oxygen is the only one that's given us trouble. And the problem is we have three oxygens over here and two over here. In the past, what we would have done is use the lowest common multiple. But because we're forming one mole of product, we are actually going to use fractions here. The fraction that turns this O2 into three oxygens is a three halves. So 3 halves O2 is going to make 3 oxygens at the end. And then we have to put in our delta H. In this case, the delta H is given to you. In other cases, you might have to look it up or calculate it. So this is what a thermochemical equation of formation looks like. If you want to do one more as practice, there's one here for aluminum chloride. Otherwise, what we can do is go on to kind of another version of Hess's law. In this other version of Hess's law, it's less puzzle-like and more math-like. And what we do is we use the values of delta HF to determine the delta H for a reaction. The reason that we can do this is because we have the delta HF for the products, we have them for the reactants, and the difference is going to be your delta H for the reaction. So remember products are like your final and reactants are like your initial. 
And whenever we see delta, that's change in, and it's always final minus initial. For those of you who haven't seen these symbols before, the ones I've just highlighted in yellow are summation symbols. It means that you're taking all the products and you're summing the delta HFs for them together, and you're subtracting the summation of all the reactants delta HFs. So let's look at what a problem might look like. Here, we're given a chemical equation, and we want to calculate the delta H for this equation. So what we can do is we can look up the enthalpy of formation for all the products and all the reactants. This is going to be in a big table in the back of your book. We want to make sure that equation is balanced, and if we have some coefficient that's not 1, we're going to have to utilize that uh, in our equation that we're about to use. So let's first, um, I guess, write down our equation that we're going to use. We're going to do delta H equals the delta H of the products minus the sum, ooh, that's awful. Let's try that again. That is better, of the delta H of the reactants. So in order to be successful, we have to know which ones are products and which ones are our reactants. In this case here, these are our products. And over here, reactants. So let's start with our products. This is going to be a long process because I'm going to write out all the units and it's going to be painful. But I'm going to show you why I'm writing out all the units. So for our products, I'm going to look in my table for sodium carbonate. I found it. And my sodium carbonate, we only have one mole of sodium carbonate from the chemical equation, right, because there's a one up here. And one mole of sodium carbonate has a delta H of formation of negative 1,131. So that's for sodium carbonate. Now I'm going to do the same thing for our water. Again, in our chem chemical equation, we have one mole of water. One mole of water is going to use or give off 285.9 kilojoules in one mole. And that's for water. I'm already starting to run out of space, so let's see if we can fit this in here. That for carbon dioxide, we have one mole and negative 393.5 kilojoules per one mole of carbon dioxide. So you see the reason that I put in that one mole is so that I don't make a mistake later on because now I'm going to subtract everything there from my two moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate because an individual mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate releases 947.7 kilojoules. So you can see how now I have to take that 2 and multiply it through to there. So why don't you take a moment and put it in your calculator because it is certainly a lot to keep track of to make sure that you ended up with positive 85 kilojoules. All right, so uh, that is enough for Hess's Law. I think we're going to stop there. And as always, thank you for your attention. This is Katoni signing out.